and we're back. It is speed squat day, max effort, deadlift day, still running that. And it's gonna be one of those days where the only real goal is to make it move better than I feel right now. And like, you're not gonna feel snappy, you're not gonna feel poppy going into every session, but when that happens, it's like, my only job is to do my best to make sure that it's still productive. And like with the speed squats, I'm going to freaking try to bring it to make them move as well as possible. Now, when I get through the speed squats, max effort deads might be a little different story because if I still ain't feeling poppy, it's probably less wise to try to force it on a max effort day. So gonna just listen to the feedback my body's given me. If I can bring it, I'm gonna bring it. If I can't bring it, I'm just gonna take what's there and make sure that I can come back better next week. Cause again, like if you're training conjugate, one single session's performance does not matter. What matters is your ability to stack max effort days on top of max effort days on top of max effort days. So you can build up to something cool on meet day. And like, I'm not saying this to say that I'm gonna try to fold it in. I'm not saying that to say that I'm gonna, you know, talk myself into having a bad day. Like the goal still is to do the best that I can. I'm just gonna accept that if I still feel like this by the time I get to pulls, the best that I can might be a little bit off in terms of pure performance. So let's get warming up and do our freaking best with it. Okay, work sets. Bah! No Tyler today, so we're getting out of breath. Walk it in. Twat. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah. Good. Pull, pull, pull. Drive. Drive. Fuck yeah. Good. Can't jack this thing, fucking fast enough. What? Pull, pull, pull. Drive. Pull, pull, pull. Drive. Tighter. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah. Yeah. Big pull. Yep. Good. Pull. Good. Tighter. Pull in, pull in, pull in. Yes. There you go. So we might be able to disregard like half of what I was saying in that intro because those felt freaking fantastic. Like it didn't start off perfect, but like by set three, set four, set five, that is the best I have squatted since the surgery. Like I actually felt super, super, super connected to the bar, super connected to my brace, super just in the freaking groove. So let's do our best to carry that momentum into deadlifts and try not to fall flat on my face. But the, like the fear of falling flat on my face is gonna kind of make sure that I don't fall flat on my face. But as far as movement selection goes for pulls, if you guys have been watching the vlogs for a while, you remember there was a day, I don't know how many weeks ago it was, but my plan was to pull with Monster Minis for max effort, but UPS got a snow delay, so the Monster Mini bands did not get in time for that session, and I ended up pulling with chains. And I figured that with the last heavy conventional pull day being against the light band, today would be a good day to break out the freshy Monster Mini. So let's see where we get. <laughs> Okay, need more toe pressure on this one. This 
is the one that's gonna set the tone for the day, so let's set the tone for the day. Yeah, and the fact that I'm taking this jump tells me that I'm at least feeling pretty okay today. And I know I keep saying this, but I'm gonna say it again because it's important. Meet day, your third attempt deadlift, you are going to be tired. So if you can pull well in training in a slightly fatigued state, you are gonna be so much freaking better off when it comes time to pull big on the platform. Arms down, big wedge, let's go. Serve it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit, that one surprised me. Did not expect it to move that well. Three hundo? I'm thinking three hundo. So that was a little five kilo PR with that band. And the last time I pulled against the Monster Mini, they definitely weren't brand new bands. And after yesterday, we know that brand new bands are nasty. So pretty freaking stoked with that, especially how things felt going into the session. So safe to say things are working. Let's go crank on some accessories. And like, I know correlation isn't causation, but since I'm bringing the snatches back, bulls have felt really freaking poppy at the top. It's just that big old snap. Gloops, snap. Gloops, snap. And like, I know I'm doing these right. It's like, I pull hard to hear and the kettlebell just kind of floats on up. Okay, round two. up to these deads today. Like every deadlift, that was hard that I hit this training cycle. It felt like glutes were the limiting factor, but today it felt like it shifted to something that had previously limited my pull. And where I was feeling like was the thing that was going to give the soonest was adductor magnus. And the way that I addressed that before on deadlifts was I ran a shit ton of strict step ups with slight heel elevation. So if it worked the last time I was feeling like this, let's run them again. And we're still doing the swing, so we're not gonna like lose out on glute, but I figured this will just be more productive for what I was feeling today on those pulls. And when I'm running these, I'm like trying to drop the arch of my foot through the floor, let the knee roll in a little bit at the bottom and just squeeze Magnus up to the top. And it almost feels just like how I want leg drive on my conventional to feel. And yeah, that's gnarly on Magnus. <sighs> Good choice for today. And still getting plenty of quadriceps <sighs> to go around. <sighs> <sighs> wow.
And like, yes, I probably could be controlling the eccentric better. So let's try to control the eccentric just a little better. And like, in all reality, I probably could be using a lower box, but if I were to use a lower box in this gym, I'd have to like stack that lift blocks and too lazy for that shit. So I'm okay with being a little sloppy for now. All right, let's try a little bit heavier. Trying my best to control it. And I know someone's gonna be like, well, Seth, your best isn't good enough. And I'm very aware, that's why we'll keep this in for a bit and try to get better again. I forgot how gnarly these could be. Yeah, good choice for today. Just trying to keep talking so I don't get copyright strike with this song. So running out of words. <laughs> Woo. Oh, she burns. All right, embrace the beached whale. Fooey. <laughs> Freaking happy with how I handled that at that height. Gonna toss another plate of the belt squat so it doesn't flip around on me. Because if the thing that's anchoring your feet on a Nordic is moving around, doesn't make the Nordic very fun. And like, I'm definitely not the guy that's gonna try to tell you that hamstrings are the most important muscle for any raw lift, but it's not like they aren't important because strong hamstrings are gonna make you a stronger lifter. <sighs> that's better with the feet not moving. <sighs> What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Woo. And like, there is gonna be some point in this prep where I'm gonna wanna pull back on the heavy, hard upper back work. But that point isn't here yet. <laughs> So I intended on using the Redelt fly machine again, but it is in use right now. And I know sharing is caring, but I always feel a little awkward subjecting others to the vlog. And I saw Dawson running these the other week, and I was like, I haven't tried those in a very long time. Let's give them a whirl. I am not disappointed in the exercise choice once again. Ah, hooey. <laughs> yeah. These we're gonna get the job done. The leverage at the bottom is just so gnarly. Oh, Woo.
straight back into lefty. <sighs> and what's funny that I'll point out again is that the left arm is the side that I just had the pec surgery on. And it is surprisingly stronger than the right at these, but the right is the side that I had two shoulder surgeries on and a shattered humerus when I was in high school. So <sighs> we're gonna do our best to continue getting that sucker on the right to work better because backing off on training the right a little bit through the surgery, it definitely fell off. And <sighs> I need to crank on it some more. And like that was one of the biggest regrets I had about the surgery is I was so focused on doing shit for the left side that I had the surgery on that I neglected the right a little bit too much. And now I gotta work to get it back. So <sighs> we're working to get it back. Okay, time to not be a pussy with my ab work again. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get this up and then get into it. Oh. Getting mounted is gonna be harder than sit up. Wow. Okay, we're in. Try to make getting into this thing. Oh, dumbbell spinning loose. A little better this time. There we go. And I don't remember if I said this last set, but it's a hundo. I'm trying to brag that it's a hundo, I guess, but shit is heavy. But if you want to get stronger, God, let's heavy shit. Yeah. You fucking psychopath. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? Need strong abs if I want to squat big. Jesus. Well, that went a hell of a lot better than I was expecting it to. And I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again because it is so important. You cannot let how you feel going into the gym dictate your outlook on the training session. Because... Like if you go into a session today, like feeling like I did and think that you might not be able to bring it and you let that get in your head and you let that bring you down and you let that prevent you from even having a chance of being productive, you're going to have a shit training session no matter what you can do. And like on the other side of that, if you walk into the gym feeling like you were gonna smash everything and then halfway through warmups, it's just not there, it's not clicking, you don't got that pop and then you try to force it, you're gonna screw things up too. And what I always try to do for myself is that no matter how I feel when I walk in the gym, I'm going to do my best to bring it appropriate to what my body has given me. And like at this stage of my career, like I can, I'm in tune enough to know when it is worth pushing and what it is there and when it is time to wake up and send it a little. And I also know when trying to wake up and send it a little is going to result in me going to see another surgeon, which is again, something that I'm really trying to avoid happening as best as possible. Because even though like I'm at a point now where I'm honestly like thinking about the pec surgery and everything, I'm like, yeah, that wasn't that bad. But I know that if I had that happen again immediately, I'd be like, yeah, this is pretty bad. But 
circling back, just do your best when you walk in the gym. It doesn't matter if you feel insane. It doesn't matter if you feel terrible. Just do your best to make the session productive. And if the session is productive, it is going to be additive and build up and build up and build up. And just stacking productive sessions back to back to back to back is how you are going to have the best meat prep possible. And sometimes productive is going to mean letting yourself rest a little bit so you can come back better the next week. Sometimes productive is going to mean sending it and going for it because shit is clicking and it is worth taking something big on the day. And sometimes productive is just gonna look pretty damn average because the reality is most training sessions are average. So that's what I got guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting that like button. Appreciate the hell out of all of you. Have a wonderful rest of your night.